Shepard Urenje is a specialist in teacher education at the Swedish International Center of Education for Sustainable Development at Uppsala University. Shepard's research expertise is found in the education, understanding and development in learning sustainable development. Learning for to rethink and learning for change. Beside, besides the work at Svedest and cooperation with BUP, Shepard is also engaged in several global UNESCO networks. It is possible that some of you have heard this presentation before, but at least I think it's worth, worth listening to again. So here is an updated version of smartphones, gorillas and armed conflicts. And just some, some information before I give over to Shepard. You are free to, of course, to discuss with this topic, either using the chat, both during and after the presentation, and by asking for the word afterwards. And I will also mention that Ulrika from BUP Secretariat in Uppsala will record this presentation and it will be available on the BUP YouTube channel afterwards. And this webinar is a part of the year of research-based knowledge launch, launched by, for example, the Academy of Finland. So now, please, Shepard. Thank you very much, Cecilia, for that um, introduction. I would like to greet everybody in the name of the Baltic University program which is a program that is very close to us, me, Cecilia, and Seneca. And I am happy to be back at the BOOP with this uh, presentation, which has come back as a popular demand, or I have been asked to make a repeat of this because we thought it is very useful to the theme that we have in this uh, autumn and also on how it relates to our quest to achieve the sustainable development goals. Okay, I think I should share my screen now so that we can get started. Share. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, very good. Okay, most of you, will remember this picture, at least those of you who participated in the Baltic University program course on ESD. And what we were talking about here was the relationship or the link between the gadgets that we are using and the ecological and social risks that come as a result of these gadgets in other parts of the world, in this case, we are looking at what happens in the Democratic Republic of Congo in particular, and in general, what is happening in Africa. So the title is Cell Phones, Gorillas, and Armed Conflict. I will use the term cell phone and mobile phone interchangeably. In the title, I've got cell phone, but I'm sure in the presentation itself, I'm using the term um, mobile phones. I mean the same thing when you see that. Okay, this is going to be our agenda today when we discuss. One, I will look at how technology has become our daily life. In other words, we don't need an introduction to this. It's just a reminder of how technology has become our daily life. And then two, how much do we know? I will ask that question. How much do we know about our mobile phones? We will try and go into the mobile phone itself and see how much we can pick out from inside the mobile phone. We will then go on to look at the risk to ecological and human well-being. The risk here being the link between the use and purchase and merchandising of mobile phones it has links to ecological and human well being. And then we will look at how this is also linked to conflict minerals 
and how this is linked to the sustainable development goals. And I will wind up by discussing what we can do in order for us to make everything sustainable, to try and solve this problem so that it does not degenerate into the situation where it is promising to go if we don't do anything about it. So we start now. Okay, so I start with technology has become part of our lives. I wonder how many of you have ever imagined a life without information. You might have heard this when people have talked to you or reported to you that I don't know the answer to what you are asking because the computers are down or because I don't have Wi-Fi or because I don't have a network or any of those reasons like the battery now has gone flat or we don't have electricity at all. Those answers are actually signifying how much we have become dependent on technology. In fact, I can argue that technology is not becoming part of our life. I can argue that technology is now our daily life. I can't imagine where technology is not our daily life. We can resonate with this in many, many, many different ways. Okay, so in what ways is technology our daily lives? You might understand it this way, that many times when you go to the grocery shop, the, the, the cashier will use barcodes. We have got an introduction of smart cars in terms of electric cars and, and so forth. Amazon is a common is a common signia now where it comes to online buying, etc. We also have situations like smart technology, electricity in terms of wind turbines. How have you ever thought that wind turbines are also dependent on technology, satellite navigation, for an example, and Wi-Fi? Apart from these, many, 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 many other things that we have in our daily lives where technology has become part of us. From the time that we wake up to the time that we go to bed, technology has become part of our lives and the situation is not changing. It can only continue to go on and on. Okay, maybe I could ask you this question as well. Which technology do you use? We all use some kind of technology. And whatever technology we are using, it is tied down to some kind of negative effects when you consider where things come from. We should always ask the question, where does the stuff come from? All right, so here I have got this um, text on the left-hand side. There is an explosion in the demand of materials essential for technology. For an example, materials for batteries used in smartphones, electric cars, and wind turbines. It depends on which technology you are used to or you are using. Okay, but today I would like to talk about the smartphone. I'm talking about the smartphone as the most used electronic device in society. We are living in the era of gadgets and smartphones and communication has never been so easy. Communication has been so fluent. It has never been so easy because of the advent or the coming in of the smartphone. So I will talk about the smartphone today. Here are some uses of the smartphone. I have, I, I have isolated Africa here where I come from just to show that the smartphone has actually penetrated many places that we never thought of. On the left-hand side, we have got a, a family there. These are the Sun people who live in the Kalahari Desert. They are using a cell phone. It is an old phone, but it is still a phone, okay? And on the right-hand side, we have got people there who are receiving money on their cell phone. That is the most common use of a cell phone in that part of the world is it can be used as a money transfer situation, okay, device, I should say. And on the bottom left, we have got uh, that lady there. She is checking markets. Farmers 
get cash through mobile phones and they also check the market what the market is like before they sell their maize their tomatoes their potatoes etc so cell phones have got apart from what we already know here in the western world in sweden in europe and maybe in 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 the other parts of the baltic university program we also have many other uses that we are not used to like the ones that i am displaying here okay this picture here is trying to explain to us the a forecast of the number of mobile devices worldwide from 2020 to 20 20 um to 2025 and this is in billions okay so what it shows here is the numbers at the top there from 2020 we have got 14.02 to 2025 we have got 18.22 that number is signifying in billions the number of mobile devices and if you measure this against the population of the world you will notice that the number of mobile devices is now more than twice as many uh, as, as there are more than twice as many devices as there are people in the world. In other words, on average, if we're going to divide the number of mobile devices with the number of people who are residing in the world, each one of us will have two mobile devices that's how many they have become and the situation that i would like to get into now is okay so if we have that much that many uh, uh, mobile devices do we know what goes into those mobile devices my question here is how much do you know about the mobile phone that you are using for an example do we know the impact of mobile phones on our ecological socio-economic and uh, socio-economic world. What I would like to show are a few glimpses on uh, the ecological, social, health, and economic impacts of our mo mobile phones as we are using them today. So if it was in a, a workshop, we would go into an activity. We will not do an activity, but I will explore with you how many, how many mobile phones have you owned in your lifetime? This is something to think about, okay? If you think about that quickly, okay? And what have you done with the mobile phones you no longer use, okay? The third question being, what is the largest, uh, what is the longest time you have had with one mobile phone? And lastly, how many mobile phones will you have owned by the time you are 70 years old. This is not a witch hunt. It is just an exercise to show the mobile phones that each person will have owned by the time that they get into their senior years. Then that will help us look at how much impact per each person has had by owning a mobile phone. So what makes a mobile phone? So these are some basic um, mobile phone components, the things that you find on a mobile phone. You have got a circuit board, which contains the brain. The brain, the phone has got a brain, the brain of the phone. And this brain of the phone is made up of mostly what we refer to as tantalum capitals, okay? And the other things that you find on the phone are an antenna, which detects the network, a liquid crystal display, which looks like plastic, is the face of your phone. You have got a keyboard where you've got numbers and letters. You have got a microphone, the one that will speak when someone calls. You have got a speaker, which magnifies the volumes, etc. You also have a battery. Another thing that has got a problem here is the battery. So it is mainly the battery and the circuit board, which is of a matter of concern in our discussions today. These are not the only components. There are many other components that I have not listed here. If I can show them to you. So 
the tantalum capitals that I mentioned, they are actually coming from what we refer to as columbite tantalite, which is in short, it is called coltan. And this coltan is used for the production of these capitals. And tantalum capitals are used in almost every kind of electronic device that I mentioned earlier on. And most, the most use, the biggest use is in our mobile phones. So this is what the back of your cell phone would look like. This is a circuit board. And each of those metals, those tiny metals that we see at the back there are composed of coltan, the product coltan, which comes from columbite tantalite. So a mobile phone circuit board shows those capitals. Okay, why is this important? It is important because the mineral which produces this coal tan is at the center of a big controversy. So you wouldn't buy a blind diamond, but do you own a conflict phone? Maybe you own a conflict phone. If you own a cell phone, you probably own part of the Democratic Republic of Congo, where 60 to 80 percent of the coltan found in the world is produced. Now, this diagram here is showing us where the Congo is on the left, and on the right hand side is a magnification of the country itself. And according to Earth Science Museum, 80% of the world reserves of coltan is found in the Democratic Republic of Congo. So the rest of the world will share the other 20%. 80% comes from the Democratic Republic of Congo. And in, to be specific, this, this coltan is found in, in the Northeast of, of, of the Democratic Republic of Congo. And if we can quote one of the, the miners here, he said, this region, which is the Eastern Congo, there's so much of this coltan, you just dig on any hill and you find it, okay? So where, where, where exactly do you find this coltan? You have got a place called South another place called North Kivu, another pair place called Orio, or, or, Oria Ntale. So those three places are rich with coltan, so rich in coltan, you'd expect this place in the world to be one of the most progressive, one of the richest places in the world, but it is actually a case. The situation is not like that. Okay, so this is, this is what we would expect as a risk in our use of electronic uh, gadgets. Yes, it is a risk, electronic waste, but this is not the real problem. This is actually a very small problem when it comes to the real problem or the real issues. The real issues here, which we would like to explore, are concerned with the risk to ecological, economic, and human well-being. And what would these be? we will look at the following things. We are going to identify the places in the world where mobile phones are made. That's a problem. And we are going to trace the routes that the components take to reach these, those places. That's another problem. We are going to trace the routes that the mobile phones take to reach us, the consumer. That's another concern. And we will then identify the information that we are not told when we buy our mobile phones. And lastly, we will explore the reasons why this information is not being told to us. Okay, right. The picture that we are seeing there is a real picture of a mine in the Democratic Republic of Congo. This is called Luowo Colton Mine. It is near Rubaya in North Kivu. This mine is chaotic. Each wall that you see there is dug to reach some coltan or mineral reserves down there. You can see from what the picture is depicting that there is a lot of chaos here. It is dangerous. It is not safe. And, there, and, and, and it, it is a miracle that you don't have a disasters, big disasters in this area. If they do okay, we are not told. At least journalists do not talk 
about that. So this is the picture that you will see when you go to Northern Eastern Congo. This is how coltan is being mined, okay? Most of it is being mined, they call this artisan mining, which is small scale uh, operated by um, different groups of people. So to a closer look, this is what it would look like for people working in a mine. If I have time, I will give you a glimpse of how this is actually taking place. So these people here are, are mining. So we'd like to find the link here. Your cell phone on the left, you've got gorillas on the right. Do we have any link between your cell phone, the cell phone that we are using and the gorillas? Of course we do. These gorillas also live in the Northeast of the Democratic Republic of Congo. And this is place where coltan is mined. And it is also the only home for the world's endangered lowland gorilla. It is the only home for these guys here. You remove all, all the natural uh, environment in there, then these guys do not have anywhere to live. But then that is that it actually gets worse because they are also targeted in many ways. This is a very sorry state. If you are not kind hearted, maybe you don't have to look at this picture that I am showing here. Because in the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, they also uh, kill gorillas for bushmeat. You, you will find out that in this area, um, uh, uh, food is, is scarce. So bushmeat makes up about 30 to 80 percent of the protein intake. The picture on your top right shows the gorillas that have been poached, okay? And if you see people there in what looks like army fatigue, those are rangers, they are national park rangers. And on the bottom left, you can see there, people have uh, poached a gorilla and they are mostly going to have a gorilla for food, etc. So the question is, what is food and what is not food? Would you consider a gorilla to be food? We are also only talking about physiological things here, but you also have many ethical things that you see, do, do, does the gorilla have a place in this area where it stays? Okay, so the question that I would like to ask you is, what do we lose if the lowland gorilla disappears? Do we really need the lowland gorilla? Do we really have to preserve it for one reason or another? I don't have time to discuss answers or perspectives to this question here, but I suppose you will have your own views in as far as this. So the point that I would like to make here is the mining of coltan in the northeast of Congo is endangering the existence of the lowland gorillas. Okay, then we have got another case here. Is there any link between the phone that we are using and armed conflict? If there is a link, what, what is the link? I will bring the picture again of that mine that we saw earlier on. And in this mine, you will notice that the mining is strongly linked to armed conflict. And armed conflict is strongly linked to the movement of people, forced movement of people. And, you, and at the bottom left there, I have got that quote here, which gives you an insight on why there is conflict in this region. 100 kilograms of gold can buy 5,000 AK, AK-47s. Gold is the other mineral that is mined in this area. It comes in the same places where coltan is mined. Coltan is even more valuable. Coltan will actually buy even more guns. If you've got more coltan, then you are most likely going to have more guns. So we have got a link there. And this situation that we have in the Congo is chaotic. As I have mentioned, this is a video of what is happening during the mining. I will just give you a glimpse of it. You will look for it on your own. Two minutes. This is one of the thousands of unregulated, unmonitored mines in the DRC. It's crawling with children working like modern day slaves. A 12 hour long day of punishing work may earn them the equivalent of a pound. Although one of the poorest countries on earth, DRC is rich in minerals. 
but a history of brutal colonial exploitation looks like being repeated now in 2017. Much of it's mined by hand with rudimentary tools in harsh, potentially hazardous conditions. And wretched whether or not the rush is on for a mineral the DRC has in great abundance, cobalt, and it's fast becoming more precious than gold. It's a critical ingredient in lithium ion batteries which power smartphones and laptops. <laughs> An army of children are at the heart of the mining production. I will have to stop it here, otherwise it, it can become worse than this. So this is a glimpse of what is happening at a mine in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Okay, so I've got a quote here for people, someone who lives there. It says, when the FDLR, this is a rebel army group, okay? When they come to a mine, the first thing they do is get the girls and abuse them. Then they force many people to work and kill those who don't want to work. This one is from a former militia commander. So these mines are actually owned by militia groups. They are the ones that make money. They don't, they, and they're always in conflict with each, with each other. This war will not end as long as this situation does persist. So what can we conclude here or what can we add on to what we have heard so far? Conflict is, sorry, coltan is a conflict mineral. And we would like to find out here who is involved in this conflict mineral. Various armies are involved. Rebel groups are involved. There are also outside actors involved in the form of mobile phone companies. And why? They have profited while contributing to violence and exploitation during wars in the region. As long as there is instability, you can get coltan for almost free. It is very cheap if you can get it by force during a time where you have got a lot of chaos. And this picture here is trying to show you some of the companies that you have got that, uh, that are participants in the Colton supply chain. If you look at your phone, you might find it pointing to one of these, okay? In one way or another, they are kind of involved. I will show it again towards the end, okay? Now there is this, you don't have to worry about all those pictures. What I just wanted to show here is the, the argument from Marie Tolemonde. Marie Tolemonde argues that there would be no smartphones or electric cars without the Democratic Republic of Congo. Whether we agree with this or not, that's something else, but it's the point from which to start. Beginning from 5, 5G, uh, Wi-Fi, smartphones, electric vehicles, renewable energies, all those, she argues, those would not actually exist if the Democratic Republic of Congo did not exist, we would not have those things. That's the argument. Of course, it is not quite succinct. You need to go deeper into what she is saying. So I will leave that one with you. You look for Marie Tolemonde and she will tell you how she come to that conclusion. But anyway, what we will do now is look at the supply chain. We would like also to look at the difference. If you are mining in the DRC, you mine like this. But if you're mining in another, part, in another part of the country, like Australia, you mine like that. Okay, so there's a stark difference here. And when you are transporting your coltan in the Democratic Republic of Congo, it is by hand like what we have at the bottom left. And in, the, uh, in, in a place like Australia, you use modern ways of moving minerals. Stark different, okay? We are living in two worlds. In the same world, the situation is not necessarily the same. So what we are looking at here is what happens? Can we follow the coltan? So in step one, this is the mine, like the mine that I showed you earlier on, that's what is happening there. And then we have got step two. Uh, sorry, I should. Okay, in step two, it goes to the mining dealer, okay? At the mining dealer, 
that's where you are going to sell your coltan they will grade it and tell you how much it is and then from there then it is exported the mineral enters the international market this mineral is not sold from congo it moves from congo into uganda into kenya then to the port or it moves from congo to rwanda to kenya then to the port or from um, congo burundi tanzania then to the port when the coltan is being exported it is exported as if it is coming from kenya rwanda or tanzania and not from drc because if they say we are buying from drc then you are dealing with conflict minerals and it's against international law so this is part of the chain number three then number four or number four the transit routes i have already talked about that they are obscured what happens before kenya tanzania and rwanda is obscured it is not clear what is clear is it is coming from kenya from tanzania from rwanda burundi that is clear and from there our mineral will then go on to the east to refineries are found in the east there they are uh, they, they multi-source the, 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 the materials and most of it is from the DR Congo. So they will refine it there. They will make the batteries there. They will make the smartphone there. For your own information, the iPhone that you are using is probably made in China or one of the states in Southeast Asia. And from there, then the cell phone finds itself in your hands. And what I am going to ask you is, could your cell phone, the one that you are using now, could it be from a conflict mineral? Is it a conflict a mobile phone that you are using? Let's look at the conflict minerals and the sustainable development goals. I'm running out of time now. I think I'll have to move a little bit faster. This transit route I have already explained. This is the source of your coltan this is uganda this is kenya okay this is burundi this is rwanda so the conflict minerals go to kenya and they end up in the east or they go to tanzania and they end up in the east in the east that's where the refinery is made and the source of these minerals is documented as from kenya uganda burundi Kigali and Tanzania okay but what I want to talk about is this now on a world map like this tantalum mine production worldwide in 2020 this is what it showed this I am taking this information from Statistica 2021 Democratic Republic of Congo produces 670 metric tons of coltan it is the largest producer but when you look at the legal production it is actually number two or number three where rwanda will be up there okay rwanda would be up there then followed by all the others if you look at this graph here this country here is a very rich country it should be making money but it's not making money okay so this diagram is just to show you where the drc stands with reference to how much it has in mineral wealth and then something happened, something that is sickening. Now, you would expect in the DRC that the United Nations would be there. Yes, it is there. The United, the DRC has got the largest United Nations peacekeeping force in the world to try and solve this problem of fighting. And the people who are pro trying to protect these people are also involved in the trade for these uh, minerals so i've got a situation here where uh, congo is investigating a united nations driver for trafficking minerals so this is what was found but the story is like this i have got these these are newspaper stories from 2011 2018 and uh, 2018 so the first one 
Congo investigates UN driver for trafficking minerals. The second one, United Nations truck overturns with the stolen Congo minerals. The third one, United Nations truck overturns carrying sex of illegal minerals. And we have got the truck here. This is what happened. This truck was involved in an accident. And inside this truck were bags of coltan, minerals that were going beyond the border to a place somewhere in Rwanda or Burundi, etc. So these people have, have been sent there to protect the people of DRC. And instead of doing that, they get involved in, 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 in stealing minerals. I'm not saying all UN personnel are like that, okay? Some of them will be like that. But there is a ray of hope, a ray of hope in that in, there are industrialization opportunities that have come. The first one is that of Africa's first coltan separation plant to be built in Rwanda. Okay, That's, uh, I think this has already started to happen since 2016. This is good, but Rwanda is not DRC, okay? Where is this coltan coming from? It's coming from DRC. Rwanda is not DRC. So who benefits? It's Rwanda. Then the second point is on Africa's first coltan smelter is going to be established in Tanzania in 2017. It is already there. The same problem. It's good for industrialization in East Africa, but Tanzania is not DRC. Why should minerals from DRC be processed in Tanzania? I leave those questions to you. You can find that for yourself later on. This looks like a solution, but to me, it is still a problem. Now, I would also want you to listen here for one minute from Jeffrey Sachs. He is referring to the Democratic Republic of Congo. I will not play it all. You will just listen to it briefly, and then I move on. The CIA assassinated your first popular leader, Mr. Lumumba, and then installed another dictatorship for the next 30 years. And then Glenn Corr and others now suck out your cobalt without giving you tax income. We don't reflect on that. We say, what's wrong with you? Why don't you govern properly? This is Jeffrey Sachs. He's talking at the United Nations. At, at this big platform, they are recognizing that the international community is involved in, in the mess that the Congo is in. But now I want to conclude. So I, I will move on very quickly. And, talk, and link this to the Sustainable Development Goals. The dilemma of achieving Sustainable Development Goals or Global Goals by 2030, and, and the Congo is also part of the world. It is also expected to achieve these goals, but I will tie this to minerals, okay? This is general. If current trends continues, the world will not achieve the goals until 2082, okay? So places like Democratic Republic of Congo will extend our ambition to achieve goals by 2030. The earliest we can, if you are managed to solve the problem in the Congo, if we are going to, at current trends, we are going to solve those problems by 2082, if, if not much later. Then COVID pandemic has also set us back another decade, delaying achievement of these goals to 2092. So we will not achieve them if the current persists, we will not achieve them until 2092. We are now destined for more than 60 years behind the global target date of 2030. So what are we talking about here? When you look at poverty and hunger in situations like this, we are not doing anything if not increasing the chances of increasing the risk of hunger, the risk of poverty there. When you look at good health and education, these children that you saw in the picture, they are not going to school, okay? And health situations here is pathetic. People die on a daily basis from malaria, from contamination, from drinking polluted water, etc. If you look at water and gender quality, this picture here at the bottom left, it is directly against women and children. There is no gender equity here or quality. It is quite selective. When you look at decent work and economic growth and also inequalities, we are very, very far from achieving those. And most of all, peace, justice, and strong institutions are non-existent in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Apart from also the life on land, the guerrillas I talked about, 
the vegetation and the insect, destruction of biodiversity, etc., is at risk. With all these things here, places like the Congo will delay us from reaching the sustainable development goals by 2030. So what can you do? What can I do? What can we do? Okay, the question is, could it be possible that we are, we as mobile phone users are contributing to the conflict in the Congo? Okay, this uh, picture here shows uh, information that I got from the ethical and environmental record of 15 mobile phones. Okay, this is what they found out. This is the best performing phone with reference to ethics as an ethics consumer. It is called Fairphone. Okay. In the middle, we've got Apple, Huawei, Lenovo, and Motorola. They are at least considered, they do something with reference to conflict minerals. But these ones here, they don't really do anything. What they want is just Colton to make phones and sell. Okay. All these ones here. So you, when you buy your phone, you must look at situations like what are the ethics of the company from which I am going to buy my phone. So what we are saying here is, um, when you look at the situation here, I've got this quote here in red, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good people to do nothing. If you consider yourself as a good person and you do nothing, you are actually perpetuating evil. And also good people do not need laws to tell them to act responsibly. You don't need to be told by anybody, by this lecture or anybody to do the right thing. You must just know that I should do the right thing. What we have at the bottom here is what we refer to as the biophone. Of course, the biophone has to be attractive. It has to be nice. It has to work properly, like what we have on the right. If it is like what we have on the left, then we may not be going to buy that phone. So what happens is we do have biophones that really look good. We do have them. So what can you do? Consume, you've got a choice to do, okay? You must demand that Colton only comes from legitimate sources. In other words, you should be saying, if it is a conflict, Colton, I'm not going to buy that phone. Put pressure on your government to support a political solution in the Congo, then they will have proper minds. Those people will be employed. They will have houses and schools and health centers, and the situation will be different. And then you must recycle your old phone so that we reduce the pressure on what we have in the DRC. And you can also donate your old phone so that someone who was going to buy a new phone can use your, your old phone. Old in sense that it has been used before, it has been pre-owned, not because it doesn't function anymore. And lastly, you must buy from Fairphone. If you buy your phone from Fairphone, you are assured that that is a phone that has been made and has been acquired uh, sustainable. I thank you. Now I think I should stop. I talked a little bit more than I should have, but I'm sure that is okay. Thank you very much.